Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex and today I want to show you how I set up my charts. What is the layout I use? Why do I use it? How many stocks do I use? Do I keep a watch list and so forth? So this video is going to be really helpful for you, especially if you're new to the market guys. I know with GameStop, Nokia stock, AMC and all these hype stocks, I know we have a influx of traders coming into the markets currently. So I want to help you guys get you on the right track and show you the best way to set up your charts. So starting off, right, you got a new chart tab. It's completely fresh when you open up your thinkorswim. How are you going to set it up? Let me show you how and why I set my things up like I do. So first thing I want to tell you is we have 12 tickers we're looking at constantly at least. Now why 12 and not 15? Well, for example, here on slash ES, which is the S&P mini, you're going to see we have the numbers here on the side, 39, 32 is where we're at currently, right? Whereas if you zoom out to 15 charts, boom, the numbers are gone. Okay, so 12 is the max that I can look at on my screen where I can actually see the numbers. And obviously, we want to see the numbers. That's why we're trading. We want to know the levels, uh, what's the price, and so forth. Pretty obvious stuff, right? So what do I actually put in all these 12 ticker locations? Well, on the right side, I'm going to have the ES, which is the S&P 500, basically, guys. It's the futures version, right? For example, you could put the SPY here if you wanted. Okay, but this is going to be the general market. So I always want to, you know, obviously keep an eye on the general market. How is the market doing? Second, I'm always going to go ahead and put the VIX right below it because it's inverse correlation, right? So if the S&P 500 goes up, the VIX should be going down. As you can see, that's the case right now, right? So there's no divergence there, no, nothing fishy going on, no warning signs that we need to be worried about, right? The market's going higher, VIX is going down. Everything lines up perfectly there. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and put is DXY, which is the US dollar, which is also another inverse correlation of the S&P 500. So when market goes up, dollar should be going down. It's exactly what you have there again. So you see that the correlations are lining up. Nothing is off. Okay, and so this is why you already have three different things lined up because you want to be able to notice irregularities in the market so you can capitalize and take advantage on that. And I'll show you how to do that here as we move along. Lastly, what I'm going to have here down in the right side, I'm going to go ahead and put Bitcoin right here in the bottom right. And why? Well, this is an inflationary asset that should be inversely correlated to the dollar. So we're going to be able to notice the irregularity there. Now, how would you actually capitalize on an irregularity? I'm sure you might be wondering if you're new to the market. Let me give you a great example. So let's say the market's actually rocketing higher. But the volatility, which is a measure of fear in the market, is also rising. What that tells you is that as the market tries to go higher, market participants are actually becoming more fearful. They're actually scared. And so that's how you can start to keep an eye on the market for, uh, for potential reversal. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you use these irregularities. Now, guys, if you have any questions on some of these inverse correlations, leave me a comment and I'll definitely explain it to you further in detail there. But now, I'm sure you're wondering, what are some of the stocks I actually look at? Now, guys, come on. When we go into the moon on GameStop, I got to keep tabs on my rocket ship here. GameStop in the top left, obviously. Okay, AMC in the right. Nokia in the bottom right. And I've got, of course, BlackBerry in the bottom left. Like, come on, guys. It's a rocket ship, and we're just, you know, we're stopping for some fuel, guys. So, obviously, that I got to be looking at those here. Okay, now... What else am I going to lick out besides my rocket ships? Well, obviously, that's a very nice collection there. Um, but, you know, I, I like my cars too, okay? So, obviously, guys, I'm going to have Tesla over here. I'm going to have Neo, guys. Come on, come on. And, uh, you know, speaking of rocket ships, who actually makes these rocket ships? Come on, guys. Space, Virgin Galactic, of course, okay? And I also sometimes like to fly first class. Uh, you know, obviously I get myself a Boeing. Okay, so come on guys. It's the best stocks right here uh, I don't think you really ever need to look at any other stocks. Come on guys You got your four rocket ships parked ready to go. We're just you know getting some rocket fuel We got Tesla so we can have our electric vehicles so we can save the you know the world our ecosystems with electric vehicles Neo same thing, but the Chinese version man. I mean come on guys it, and it's a beautiful setup I think you can see where we're going here. Okay, but guys in all seriousness I got to break it to you if you're here because you trade Nokia, AMC, or GameStop, okay? Well, I got some news for you. When you're trading options, which is what we specialize on this channel, these aren't actually going to be the best stocks to trade normally, okay? So let me actually give you a method to find some really hot stocks constantly with pretty much no effort. 
All you're going to want to do, go to Investors Business Daily. You're just going to scroll down, and they're going to give you the top stocks that went up today and down today. Now, what's important about this is they actually tell you the volume change in relation to the average volume which is super important because now you're actually going to be able to spot stocks that are on run uh, because of institutional buying or selling, which is obviously the most important selling, right? Because I can't move the market. You can't move the market. It's the institutions that move the market, okay? It's those damn hedge funds that ruin GameStop, guys. So obviously, uh, we want to keep an eye on what the hell they're doing so we can obviously ruin their plans, right, guys? Ha, ha, ha. So, uh, you know, if you're actually looking for some better stocks to trade with options, right? There's nothing wrong with these stocks. I'm just saying with options, let me give you some good ones, right? Now, this changes from time to time. It actually changes every single day, right? Because we've got great earnings reporting on the weekly uh, when it's earnings season. So, for example, today we traded Shopify. So that would be a top priority stock. We'd have it there. Okay, we also traded Garmin. That, that would be a top priority stock. That would be right there. So we like, you know, if you actually don't get this earnings table, we send this to your email every single week. So that's going to be the third link in the description. I can actually send you the most important stocks every single week straight to your inbox. So definitely check that out. But these are going to be our main focus every week when it's earnings season. But that being said, when it's not earnings season, when we have to rely solely on our chart reading skills, well, then we're going to be looking at stocks that aren't reporting earnings. And so how do you do that? Well, you have to be able to read charts to understand which stocks are going to be moving, which ones are going to drop, which ones are going to go higher. Um, but that's how we f you know, figure out our stocks. So we've got a big watch list. If you want me to go over a watch list video, let me know. We could probably do that, I'm sure. Um, but you know, here, I'm just going to give you some main stocks I like to trade probably, right? I like Amazon good one to trade because it has a very high range right it can move a lot in a short amount of time especially trading on a friday that can make you a ton of money baidu guys that thing's been on the move crazy lately so that would be a top priority stock currently um tesla we would probably keep that up it's not a you know it's a pretty good stock to to, to keep in mind just because it's the institutional baby okay if they're taking out an institutional baby a lot of times they'll be taken out of the other hot stocks okay now guys in the bottom and the last three obviously we're going to have gamestop because when you see gamestop take off to the moon you want to see it take off three times so you can live the moment multiple times in one day i mean it's the best feeling ever so obviously gamestop in the bottom three and that's what we've got for the setup. Just kidding. We're actually going to put Twilio here. Okay, why? Once again, they're another uh, company reporting earnings here. So they're top priority. They can make a very big move and they can make us a ton of money if you know how to trade it. Okay, so for example, why is Twilio such a good stock to trade right now? Well, look at this guy. They just moved up 50 points in less than 20 minutes. Where if you take a look at Nokia, these guys haven't even moved one point in 20 days, okay? They just moved 50 points in 20 minutes, right? So this is going to get you paid as an options trader, okay? Nokia, that's not going to get you paid as an options trader currently, okay? Your time will come later. I'm sure it's just, you know, stopping for a little bit of rocket fuel. So congratulations. I'm sure the tank is almost full, and, and I'm sure you're ready to take off, guys. Congratulations, Nokia, guys. But... With that being said here, Twilio going to be there. And then obviously GameStop, GameStop. Well, we're actually going to switch that here. We're going to put NQ, which is the NASDAQ. And if you didn't know, maybe you're new, all good. NASDAQ is going to be a technology-focused sector. It's very fast-moving. It can really drop hard really quickly. It can also go high really quickly. Uh, lately, it's outperformed the S&P 500. It's outperformed the Dow Jones. So once again, it's kind of like a growth sector. It's very important to keep an eye on. This is going to include like what? Amazon, Microsoft, those big companies, Apple, the technology sector, right? So you obviously want to keep an eye on them. And then in the bottom left, you're going to have slash CL, which is oil. Now, why do you want to keep an eye on oil? Oil can serve as a very good warning sign. If you see all of a sudden oil is dumping off, that can show you that we might have had some serious news catalysts recently. And since I'm not someone who's constantly searching for the news, I, you know, I'm always looking at the charts, not the news. Well, this can serve as a warning sign to me that maybe some crazy news came out uh, that affects oil prices. If you affect oil prices, that just overall is a good indication of the strength of the economy and uh, just what is you know production levels looking like. How is everyone doing? Kind of okay. So another great measurement to keep in mind. So what do you do? You got your setup, now you're going to go save chart, save grid as, and then go ahead and give it a sweet name, like maybe drop a like on this video, or actually there's a installed bot. Okay, so if you didn't know, there's actually a bot on this channel where it actually tracks. If you don't drop a like on the video, it actually kicks you off the channel, and it actually means you'll never be able to watch another video here again, which 
that really sucks. It's actually a new YouTube feature that was implemented, so you definitely want to drop a like on the video, okay? So don't forget to do that, and uh, then you won't be, you know, getting attacked by robots on your way out of here. And uh, so, yeah, that's how I set up these 12 charts here. Hopefully that it makes sense, and if you want me to explain it in further detail, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you have a video idea, let me know as well. But if you thought we were done, we're not done, guys. Okay, if you thought this wasn't enough charts, it's not enough charts, okay? We're going to have one more chart there. We're going to have one more chart there. We're going to have one more chart there. And we're going to have one more chart there. Boom. Okay, we're going to, you know, toggle through. And um, once again, why do we have all these charts? Because, guys, there's so many opportunities in the market. Think about it. There's thousands and thousands of companies. We're only looking at 20 here, okay? So a lot of guys think that's too much. They think you should focus on one stock, but... If you're so focused on one stock, you might miss out on another great opportunity that's presenting itself. And, um, you know, for example, when you know how to read charts like us and you can come up with phenomenal trading ideas consistently and easily and know what a stock's about to do, it gives you a lot of options and opportunities. So, for example, let's say I was going to trade these six stocks. I was going to trade one of them. And none of these setups go according to plan. None of them are dropping like I want them to drop or none of them are skyrocketing like I want them to skyrocket. I look for other stocks to trade, okay? Because your plan is not always going to go exactly according to plan. So you got to be flexible and be ready to take advantage of all the opportunities. Now, how do you pull up these quick charts on the side? Very simple. You see this plus button in the bottom left. You're going to go add gadget. You're going to go quick uh, chart. It should be here, right? Quick chart, quick chart. Boom. And all you do is put in a ticker. Okay, so super helpful stuff there. Uh, I'm going to show you another thing I oftentimes like to put down here is going to be a scratch pad. Okay, so I can write notes. For example, if we're going to have a Federal Reserve meeting, I can put Fed meeting 230 as a little warning sign for me to remember, hey, we got a Fed meeting, be looking for the market to make a move at 230, right? So that's something to keep in mind there, and that's really going to be helpful. So guys, the last important thing we need to show you how to do is how to get your volume on your graph, okay? You don't want to have the volume as an indicator below because when you go to the drop a like on the video uh, chart graph, okay, you, you're not going to be able to have those indicators below. So it's important you have volume on because volume is by far the most important indicator. Now, guys, if you want a video on which indicators do I use, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. But how do you get this volume subgraph on there? Um, well, we're going to figure out together, okay? Here, you're going to go down to the settings. You're going to go to overlap volume and show price subgraph. Okay, pretty sure that's all you need to do. Okay, once you do that, you should see it pop up in blue. And I think you could change the color here. Now, guys, it's been a while since I did this beginner stuff. Um, but, you know, you can find videos on how to actually set up the appearance. But here you can see, you go to appearance. You can set the color, right? So if I want to change it to this bright blue, boom, done. Okay, so simple stuff. But, guys, if maybe you want me to show you how to set up the appearance of your charts or maybe which indicators do I use on an intraday time frame, um, how do I draw my levels, and so forth, guys. We're very flexible. We can do any video for you guys out there. Whatever you want, let me know. And then remember, guys, if you want this earnings table, which is going to give you the most important companies every single week, that's going to be the third link in the description. And then if you want to learn how to read charts like a pro, that's going to be the first link in the description to our site. Now, guys, if you didn't know, maybe you're new to the channel, I actually trade for people um, who join our coaching program. But if you want to learn how to trade companies like this and put together winning trades, it's going to be through the Crash Trading Club, which is also through the first link in the description. Check it out, guys. We've got plenty of options for you, whether you want to be an independent trader or whether you want me to actually guide you through every single trade and coach you. We've got all those options available for you. So looking forward to it, guys. It's uh, you know If you're getting started, it's an exciting journey, and I'm really excited to take you on board, and you know I'm excited doing some work with you guys. So let's let's rock and roll, and I'll see you soon. Bye.